I want us to have a look uh, a scripture that God gave me well I can tell you right now that um, and this is a kind of little warning some of you will find what I'm preaching today uncomfortable <laughs> but then you know Gloria Corpus said God sometimes asks you to do things that are scary so do it scared and so this time just do it uncomfortable because uh, you will be blessed by it in Jesus name healing is in your mouth Amen in Psalm 34 this was a revelation to me just the other day when I was praying about it in this scripture Psalm 34 verse 4 says I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears Pray talked about that before, I've read it lots of times, spoken it lots of times, had it quoted by other people lots of times, I've never noticed one thing about it. It says, I sought the Lord. Now what does sought usually mean? You're looking, doesn't it? I sought the Lord and he heard me. Excuse me. I'm looking for God and he heard me. That doesn't make sense, I thought. That's not right. So I checked so what the word sought in the Hebrew means it means to frequent a place to consult to inquire of to seek in prayer and worship so when you're seeking the Lord you're talking to him you're with him you're close to him often and you're talking to him that's how he can hear you I sought the Lord he heard me why did he hear me because I was speaking I was seeking him, I was asking him questions, I was, I was talking to him about things that were bothering me, concerning me. And I realized that if we're doing that, we have to speak about stuff. And when we speak about the things that are concerning us, and God hears us, then he delivers us from all our fears. And so I realized that if we're not talking to him about stuff that is bothering us, he won't hear it. And if he doesn't hear us, he won't deliver us from stuff because we haven't even told him we've got a problem with. We've got problems with things, we're scared about things, we're worried about things, we have fears about all sorts of things that come upon us daily. And if we don't tell him what the problem is, he won't hear us and deliver us. Personally, I'm happy to tell the Lord all the problems I think I've got. And then he'll tell me a load of other things I didn't think I've got. He'll give you a bigger list. Do you see what I'm saying? We have to talk to him about stuff. In Psalm, verse th Psalm 30 verse 2, another one that we're familiar with probably. O oh Lord my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. The word cried out there means to literally to cry out for help when we're saying help Lord I'm struggling with this please help me when we're crying out to the Lord like that we will receive our healing and I believe it's the healing isn't just so much about what you know about the subject or how many scriptures you know and things it's about how much you talk about it to God how much you speak about it and when people are talking about sickness and disease Somebody talked to me about, asked me the other day what I thought about coronavirus. I said, I'm not doing it. Not having it. I'm just not coming near me. I'm not having that. The Bible says I'm delivered from the plagues and all the things like that. It's not coming near my dwelling. And of course, they look at you a bit strange because they're not used to people talking positive about it. You're supposed to say, I'm worried and scared, to, you know. But we're not because we're trusted in God. Amen? We need to trust Him. I think sometimes we need to cry out to him a bit more than we do. I think sometimes we're a bit reluctant to call out to God and tell him how much we're struggling with things. He will hear you and he will heal you. Like I said, getting healed isn't about how many Bible verses you know about the subject of healing. Years ago I, I gave everybody in the church a little CD, a 90 minute CD and on that CD was me reading out all the scriptures from the Bible on healing it filled the whole CD I can read for an hour and a half reading all the healing scriptures in the Bible 
that will not get you healed as I understand it now what gets you healed is speaking those scriptures out to God and confessing that those scriptures are yours and you're believing for your healing yeah. Amen it's not just about knowing it, it's not just about how many scriptures you can read about it, it's how many scriptures you speak back to God and say yes that is my scripture I'm having that in Jesus name there were quite a few scriptures when we first got I got first got saved we were taught by people who were a little bit further down the road where speaking faith was concerned than we were and they were encouraging us to speak the Word of God to make it happen and I believe that we do that quite a bit here we talk about things and we speak the Word of God in reality and if you're just thinking about it or just reading it it's not going to happen as quickly or as easily for you so when it talks about healing I believe healing is in your mouth would you agree with that? okay then repeat this scripture that we've got, got up there after me then oh Lord my God I cried out to you and you healed me you can go to God and say I'm crying out to you right now Lord because I know you'll hear me but if you don't do anything like that you don't talk to him about things like that he will find it more difficult I believe to receive your healing because there's another very very important truth in the Bible in Romans 10 17 it says so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God and quite a few people I've heard have preached and said it comes by hearing and hearing not just the once hearing and hearing and hearing by the Word of God so this is an important thing you might feel sometimes you don't quite have the faith to be able to do all this just speaking the word of God out and expecting and receiving your healing you might not be good at it, you might think well I've tried it and it didn't work you might think other people have tried it but it won't work for me I don't know what you might be thinking but sometimes you think your faith just isn't quite up to the task that you think is set before you well here is how to fix it because faith comes by hearing hearing the word of God in your ears not seeing it, not reading it, hearing the word of God in your ears and how does that happen? you read the right scriptures out loud so that you can hear it with your ears Amen? sometimes you're not so sure about that let's read this one out so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God the fact that your ears just heard those words brings faith would you agree with that? Yeah. is that not what the Bible says? faith comes by hearing it doesn't by, come by reading it doesn't come by remembering it doesn't come by believing it comes by hearing and we have to speak things out more and I know it was much easier I think back in the day in Jesus' day why? because nobody had any Bibles do you know when Jesus was around there wasn't a single Bible on the planet nobody had a Bible they had some scriptures sometimes of the old, some of the old uh, uh, prophets but they didn't have a Bible like we've got now and so people used to remember scriptures by talking to it the parents would, would speak scriptures out, verses out to their children for them to remember faith comes by hearing and the more you do it the more faith you have in the words that you're speaking out Amen? The more you do this, the more faith you will have in doing it. And also, I just heard yesterday, somebody reminded me of a, script, a, a, a statement I'd heard before. Faith is like a muscle. The more you exercise it, the more powerful it will be, the stronger it will be. I don't know about you, but um, he doesn't do it so much anymore, but everybody knows who Arnold Schwarzenegger is, former Miss World. Miss World? <laughs> Whoa, Mr. Universe. Mr. Oh, sliver is on there, Mr. Universe, and also you got you got uh, people like Ray McCauley, former Mr. Universe as well. When they were all built up and all their muscles were flexing, they did not have a single muscle in their body that I don't have. Not not one. There was not a single muscle in their body that I didn't have. Mine wasn't exercised though. Theirs was, and the more they exercised it 
the stronger it became. The more they exercised it, the more able they were able to do stuff because they were stronger now. And faith is like that. The more you use your faith to believe for stuff that you don't have, to believe for stuff that's impossible, the stronger it will get and the more able you will be to do things in future. Amen? <clears throat> in Exodus chapter 15, the Bible says, I said, if you will diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which are brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that heals you. Now I need to correct something in that scripture. Not that the Bible's wrong, but the way it's read gives us the wrong impression. Let's read it again. Let's read this together, shall we? And said, If you diligently heed the word of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases to be put on you, which are allowed to be put on the Egyptians through their sin. I, I am the Lord who heals you. So God didn't put the sickness and diseases on the Egyptians. They brought them upon themselves from the devil because of their disobedience. He just didn't stop it. They brought it on themselves. He says that I am the Lord who heals you. That says that he is Jesus. I am Jehovah Rapha one of the twelve names of God and what that is saying is God's nature is healing God's nature is healer He wants you to know that He is your healer He wants to heal whatever it is that is amiss in your life He wants to heal it Firstly by us being diligent and about obeying Him and being diligent about what's doing right in his sight. And secondly, by declaring with your mouth that he is your healer. Amen? God is your healer. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Tell me that then. God is Amen. God is your healer. Guess what? Your ears just heard you say that. Faith has gone back down. Here. There's more faith in you now about that. Even after you've done this a thousand times, every time you do it, there is more faith involved in your life. And because God is by nature a healer, he can't not heal. Would you agree with that? And God just, God just reminded me, like a, an iceberg is by nature cold. You can't have a warm iceberg. You can't have a God who won't heal. Because he is by nature a healer. He will always heal whatever it is. There's never an occasion, there's never a sickness or a disease, there's never anything he isn't already there to fix and sort out in Jesus' name. <clears throat> now there's a scripture, uh, I, I found this out a few years ago and I think it's, it's really great to do this. You might not be Happy about it, but uh, there you go. In Deuteronomy 28, we might know that the first 14 or 15 verses are about the, the blessing of God upon you. Amen? And the rest of the chapter is about the curses. Well, I want to read one of the curses. In Deuteronomy 28, 61, it says, Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in this book of the law, will the law bring upon you till you are destroyed. Again, let me change that slightly. Let me read, let's read this together. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law will the Lord allow to be brought upon you through your sin until you are destroyed. Can anybody think of a sickness or a disease that's not written in the Bible? Coronavirus, there's a good example. If it's not written in the Bible, it's subject to this scripture. Would you agree with that? It's, it says it there, look. Everything, every scripture, every sickness and disease that's not written in the Bible, it applies here. <coughs> so, excuse me. <coughs> so because it's written there, we can believe that if people get involved in sin, 
sickness and disease will come upon them, including coronavirus. Would you agree? Okay, how do you get out of that? You read Galatians 3. Chapter 3, verse 13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. We've just read one of the verses from the curse of the law. He's redeemed us from that. Amen. Having become a curse, Jesus became a curse for us, for his written curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was once the case that coronavirus had the right to come upon us. But in Christ, we are redeemed from the curse of the law. The Old Testament thing was, if you committed a sin, a curse was able to come upon you. And for the most part, a lot of people are still there. But Christ has redeemed us from the curse. So now if you commit a sin, you're already being forgiven, you repent and you're back in line with God. You don't have to get rid of the curse, because if Christ is, is part of your life, you are already redeemed from the curse. Redeemed means bought out of. Isn't it? You agree with that? Redeemed means bought out of. You've been bought out of the curse of this, every single curse that's mentioned in that Bible, including coronavirus, by Jesus going to the cross. I love it. So how do you get the faith to believe this? Well, sometimes I've done this. I've read, I've read a curse from Deuteronomy 28. And I've gone straight to Galatians 3.13 and read, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Whatever that curse might be, there's curses about people taking things off you. There's curses about money, having, almost like having wings and flying away from you. Read the curse out. Read it out and have Galatians 3.13 ready to read straight after it. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being, being made a curse for us. How do you get the faith to believe this? You speak it out loud with your mouth so your ears can hear it. We need to get this into our hearts and into our lives so that we can have what God wants us to have. Amen? We don't, we don't want us to be lacking in anything. The Bible says he does not want us to lack any good thing. All good things come from God, in Jesus' name. Now there's another scripture, in, <clears throat> look at it in second, in Acts chapter 28, which I believe is going to be a real revelation to us, because it was to me. In Acts 28 verse 27, it's for, for the hearts of this people have grown dull. The ears are hard of hearing, the eyes have closed. Lest. They should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so I should heal them. So the key here, how does healing come? Let's read this together. I see with my eyes as I read the Bible. I hear with my ears as I speak out loud what I read understand with my heart because I saw and heard so that he should heal me says my God that's powerful scripture that and the key is to read the scripture and speak it out loud so that your ears can hear it which affects your heart I heard somebody say the other day the word ear is in the center of the word heart. Interesting. If you want your heart to benefit, your ears have to hear it. It's okay, there is a measure of truth, of course, in the fact that if you read and read and read the scriptures and it comes in through your eyes, it will benefit you. But the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says the real best way of doing it is to have it go in your ears. It'll go straight down into your heart. Besides, if you're looking at it and reading it out loud, it's going in twice. It's going in your eyes, it's going in your ears, it'll go down in your heart, and you will be stronger and have more faith in the Word of God. 
if you miss the middle part of speaking the word of God out your ears won't hear it and if your ears don't hear it it won't go down into your heart like God wants to he wants us to have these blessings come upon us all the time because I believe, really believe healing is in your mouth healing is in your mouth it's not in your believing, it's not in your heart it's not in the scriptures in your Bible it's in your mouth if you want to be redeemed from a sickness you start speaking the scriptures which come against that sickness you start speaking the scriptures which say my God is Jehovah Rapha He's God my healer and by his stripes I'm healed I'm reminded of a, a man, we, we only met him once uh, called Norval Hayes but we've seen lots of videos of him preaching and he's a powerful man, powerful man and at one time he used to have a very strong ministry particularly in getting people healed from cancer and uh, he lived down in Florida in America at the time and this lady came to him as lots of people did and she told him what the problem was and he started teaching her some stuff and teaching her some scriptures and he gave her a whole list of scriptures that she should speak out and she said so what do I do with all these scriptures he said when well, you get up in the morning you get this piece of paper out you will probably remember it in the end but to start off get this piece of paper out and speak these scriptures out they will go in your ears and into your heart and you will start to really have faith that these scriptures have more power in your life than the cancer does just say them over and over again and keep on repeating them and keep on repeating them and, he, and she said to him but what if I can't what if I can't keep on repeating what if I can't do all this talking the scriptures all the time he said you better buy yourself some flowers lady because you're going to die he was blunt to say that to her and it is the truth you're going to succumb to the sickness and disease if you're not speaking the scriptures which combat it if you're not speaking the scriptures out loud to God so he hears you and heals you and they go out of your mouth and into your ears and into your heart and you can be healed in Jesus name so we have got to know healing is in our mouth so I put together some words based on what we've just looked at tonight and then today I'm going to finish off with this I want us to say these words together can we say these together I declare with my mouth and believe with my heart Jehovah Rapha, my healer, has healed me. I am redeemed from the curse of the law, including coronavirus. I have the faith to believe this because I said it with my mouth. My ears have heard it and my heart understands that I am healed. Amen. I am healed. Amen. And I know that the more you say it, the more it becomes real. Because you cannot defeat the word of God. The Bible says, none of my words that have gone forth out of my mouth shall return to me void. So if his word goes out and says, I am your healer, and you speak back to him, you're my healer, that will not return to him void and you will be healed in Jesus' name. So we're standing on the word that says, by his stripes we are healed we're standing on the word which says no curse can come near us because Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law and we're saying that coronavirus has no part in our lives amen and you can come and see me later on if you want and you can have a look at my wrist and you can see the word coronavirus is there not there not on my watch You can tell people that. You can tell people that. So can you see the word coronavirus written on, my, written on, the, on there? And they say no. So that's right. No coronavirus. Not on my watch. <clears throat> and we are just trusting God. We're just trusting Him. And we just believe in His word. We're not believing all the fear that everybody's coming out with. We're not believing all that kind of stuff. Now, I just read, read something this morning from a friend of ours in America who quoted some statistics about 2007, 2009 I think it was when the swine flu thing was around in America and he was quoting some statistics about how many people were hospitalized how many people had it, how many people died 
way, way more than is going on with the coronavirus. But the media hadn't picked up on how to make people scared back then. Now they have. Now they've got people so, yeah, so poo scared they're having to buy so many toilet rolls. And, and there are people in London that I know of are being mugged for toilet rolls. Honestly. It has got that stupid. And the, the key is, I think, for us to keep a, a strong faith in God, a calm mind, and not allow all these fears to come upon us and overtake us, because we are trusting in that curse of the law. We're trusting in that scripture about that curse. Any sickness, any disease that isn't mentioned in the book of the law will be brought upon people who are involved in sin. But Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, which means we are redeemed from that word which isn't written in the Bible. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs>